So, thank you. Uh, this was a very interesting session. Thank you both, Pinko uh, and and the participants. I would be happy to discuss this a little more uh, as well later in the, in the conference. So, I've been asked to offer a foundation perspective on work in Africa and on what we think we can do or might do in Africa, what we have done, etc. So, it's been a long day. We have uh, the House of Baba waiting for us, etc. So, I'll try to be brief and leave room for questions. Um, so, moving right on. Why do we care where editors come from? Why does it even matter how many editors are there in Africa? And I'd just like to put those points before you. Contributing to Wikipedia is a meaningful, empowering experience. It's as important as participating in academic discourse, which is also, uh, as we know, a, a, an area difficult for many African scholars. But being able to be part of this discourse is a meaningful experience that Africans deserve to have, just like everyone else. Uh, additionally, when editorship from Africa is very low, as, as it is, we're missing important voices, we're missing contexts, we're missing systems of knowledge, hierarchies, categories that are just invisible or, or very, very difficult to, to find, to see uh, in, in outside Africa. And this, this paucity, this, this very small amount of, of, um, of editors in Africa necessarily results in systemic bias, right? Wikipedia has a systemic bias, uh, many systemic biases, but one of them is uh, around African content or content about Africans. Finally, there is a page on English Wikipedia. Um, I invite you to take a look. It's called There is a Deadline. Uh, it's a sentiment that things are disappearing from our world. Things need to be documented and written about while the information is there, while the people are around so we can take their picture, while text resources are still available. Uh, so certain things uh, all over the world, but certainly in Africa, are, are physically decomposing or disappearing, are, are not preserved in the way that they should be, and this is our time to get that knowledge onto a uh, digital medium for greater preservation. So these are all reasons we should care how many editors there are in Africa, how much editing is going on in Africa. <clears throat> so I'm offering you a few data points. I'm very happy um, that a lot of the data has already been presented, and I hope the data I'm bringing here is, is um, complementing that rather than repeating it. The total share of viewing Wikipedia pages in any language from Africa, the total share of browsers requesting pages from Africa of the Wikimedia projects of Wikipedia is 1.5%. And what, what Wikipedias are read in Africa? The English Wikipedia, the French Wikipedia, the Arabic, the Portuguese Wikipedia, the Afrikaans Wikipedia, the Swahili Wikipedia are the most read and you've seen some more specific uh, statistics in the previous talk, so I'll skip ahead. The share of edits coming from Africa to any language, any language Wikipedia, is 1.3%. So of all the edits made to Wikipedia all over the world, 1.3% of those edits come from Africa, and that amounts to about 25,000 edits, single edits, a month. That 1.3% is made up of 0.3% in Egypt, 0.3% from Algeria, Morocco, 0.2% from South Africa, 0.1% from Tunisia, half a percent from Nigeria, uh, and of course, lower percentages from other countries. So this is just to give you that picture, right? Where is the bulk of editing in Africa happening? And you see a clear uh, pattern. <clears throat> now, here is a list that I believe is presented for the first time because this is data that is difficult to get. This is 
This is a list of countries that have any active editor on English Wikipedia in them. And the stats that are public, the stats that Igo was using, uh, the stats that are provided by Eric Zagda are wonderful. And it's a site, by the way, even if you think you know that site, stats.wikipedia.org, you don't know it. There's so much information there, believe me. You should take that, another look. But one piece of information that is not on that site is number of active editors in a country. We have the number of edits coming from a country, but as we just saw in the Yoruba case, number of edits does not translate in any obvious way to number of editors. Now, our standard definition of an active editor is a person who has been making at least five edits a month five edits a month, about an edit a week. That's what we call an active editor. We have another metric which is very active editor. That's a person who makes at least 100 edits a month or about three edits a day. So these, th this list of countries from Algeria to Zimbabwe, that is the complete list of countries with an active editor in them on English Wikipedia. Okay, so there are some active English Wikipedians in Ghana and in Nigeria and in Namibia, but none, not a single active editor in Niger or, or uh, Rwanda. You see what I'm saying? This is a complete list. The countries that are not on this list do not have even one person making more than five edits a month. Now, I've, I've provided the same list for French. Uh, generally, we at the foundation have access to this data for any list of countries and languages. So if you have, if you want that data, I can get it for you. I cannot share uh, individual editor information because not every editor reveals where they are from. But I can give you at least this, this basic information on whether or not a certain country has active editors in it and how many, and about how many. Uh, so again, French is edited from Africa, from uh, Congo, Kinshasa, Cote d'Ivoire, Algeria, Morocco, Madagascar, Mali, Senegal, and Tunisia. And no other country has an active editor. It doesn't mean that there are no edits whatsoever, right? It just means there's no one making five edits or more a month. Um, and so uh, we've, we've heard a little about other language Wikipedias. I have deliberately focused on the larger European uh, Wikipedias, which are, as we have heard, the Wikipedias that are most relevant or most attractive for editors uh, in terms of people wanting to contribute on those languages. Uh, but I did include here the number of active editors. Right? In Yoruba, as we've heard, has one consistently active editor. Amhari has four, Swahili has 12. Um, Portuguese is a little more difficult because it's difficult to separate it from editors outside Africa. Um, but yeah, these are the numbers of active editors in those languages. So, a quick history of the Wikimedia Foundation and Africa. Things we have done in Africa, with Africa. Uh, there was the Kiswahili Wikipedia challenge with Google back in 2009. Um, it was essentially a writing competition, or a translation competition rather, inviting people to use Google's tool to translate articles from English Wikipedia into Swahili Wikipedia. It was a, a uh, badly executed uh, program, I will say this on the record. Uh, it did not involve enough community consultation with the existing Swahili and Wikipedia community. Um, Google has an interest in generating a lot of content in African languages so that they can then sell advertising uh, on more pages. That's an obvious business interest. It's, it's okay. It's their business interest. They did not force any advertising on us in this project. They took a long view. So we were okay with cooperating with that. The, the project succeeded in getting a bunch of content translated from English into Swahili. Uh, the wiki syntax and other wiki norms were a little more shaky, but the, the top contributors from that project, the winners of that competition, 
um, stuck around. They, they developed an interest in Wikimedia and they, they, they wanted to join and learn about our lists and about our conferences. However, not a single one of them remained an active editor. Not one. Uh, they did, however, turn into the group that eventually uh, started the provisional Wikimedia Kenya chapter which, as we've heard, has had a couple of projects done uh, of offline distribution um, in Kenya, but it has not sustained a core of editors. None of them have become that active editor. Uh, we have repeated this uh, program in Swana, in Botswana, in the Swana language, with, again with Google in 2011, we were hoping to do a better job this time in terms of in terms of planning the program, in terms of explaining. Also, there was a, good, a big advantage. There was no community to get upset. There was no active community in Swana at all. And so the, the students and, and volunteers who participated in the Swana Challenge could just translate and nobody would get upset. That was, again, successful in getting a bunch of content translated into Swana but not a single person uh, from that group remained an active editor uh, since then or today. Um, and so, <clears throat> in the long view, I have come to regard that model uh, as not a, not a useful tool for us. I think it, it works for Google, it creates that core of content, uh, of parallel texts, doesn't really work for us. Um, I think the, by far the, lot, the, the biggest, most successful uh, thing we've done for Africa so far is the Wikipedia Zero program, uh, about which you will hear more from my colleague Adeli, and who, who can give you all the details, but just as a headline, Wikipedia Zero today makes free data, uh, free no data charges access to Wikipedia available to potentially 100 million people in Africa uh, right now, today, and we're working on, on additional partnerships. Adeli will talk about this uh, tomorrow, or the day after the conference. Um, we have also been involved in some sort of catalyst effort to help the, uh, the, the prospective Wikimedia South Africa chapter take shape. Uh, this was in late 2010, was it? I think uh, we, we uh, helped the, the group that has been discussing it here for a while um, uh, do a meeting. We, we sent a representative from AFCOM and from the foundation, and Acha was there uh, to, to uh, help, help get things moving, and that worked. And we have uh, seen the Wikimedia South Africa chapter created sometime afterwards, and here we are, uh, their guests today, so I count that a success. Um, and we have given, uh, we have given a, a, a number of grants to initiatives in Africa. We gave a grant to that Kenyan group uh, that was largely around the offline distribution uh, project, the pilot project, which uh, Alex has described. There was a, an issue there with integrating that offline collection because it was very UK-centric. And if you are a teacher in Kenya and looking up Jomo Kenyatta on that offline collection doesn't show a result, you feel really bad about using this in your teaching. You don't have the basic, uh, the, the 100 most basic things a Kenyan might look up are just not there. So that was a, an early problem with offline collections that remains a problem. Uh, that Kenyan group has, however, worked on creating a more Kenyan, Kenyan appropriate collection, and we may finally be uh, producing that collection soon. Uh, we gave grants to the group from Ghana, a, a grant for outreach uh, that was not mentioned this morning, but that outreach activity that was described this morning was uh, supported by a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, we gave a grant to the South Africans for the projects that you've heard mentioned earlier. Jogopedia, Wikileaks Monuments, this very conference in Gaba, and we matched the funding that they got from the Open Society Foundation to help them uh, take this 
major step. Uh, finally, we give a grant to uh, a teacher in Uganda, uh, an experimental grant to create a village Wikipedia center, which is still ongoing. Um, and uh, I, I, it's too early to uh, assess. And uh, that didn't make the list here, but we also gave a grant to uh, the uh, Sequa project in, in Cameroon, uh, together with uh, Yolanda's uh, uh, initiative and help uh, to, to produce promotional material, uh, video and animation in uh, Cameroon. So that's, that, that's a very quick history of stuff the foundation was directly involved with. As, you, as you've seen, there are other uh, uh, bodies and organizations that have sponsored work in Africa. Our colleagues from Wikimedia France, from the Wiki Africa Project, the Africa Center, etc. Uh, so I wanted to answer a question that I thought might be on your minds. What is the foundation looking for? And my answer to you, as has been foreshadowed perhaps by my questions throughout the day, first and foremost, we're looking for that handful of self-motivated, active editors. We strongly believe that that is the basis and the, the prerequisite to doing any number of other programs, partnerships, etc. That group of people who are editing because they like it, because they find it fun, because they find it rewarding, because it speaks to their cultural or educational agenda, not doing it for the t-shirt, not doing it for the free trip, uh, not doing it as part of a competition. People who truly want to share knowledge for its own sake, for its education's sake, for, for reasons of cultural identity, language pride, uh, all kinds of things that motivate people to devote their time voluntarily to actually cultivating the Wikipedia uh, long term. That core, with that core, we can do a lot. We can provide funding and technical tools and contacts and networking and advice and everything that, that is uh, apart from that core of self-motivated editors. What we cannot provide so far, we've not find, found the recipe to create that core of self-motivated editors uh, from nothing, from thin air. We don't know how to do that. Uh, theoretically, outreach does that, right? Theoretically, you could deliver a workshop on how to edit Wikipedia, and some percentage of the people in your workshop <coughs> will start editing. Um, experience shows this is very, very hard. Actually, that percentage of people who start editing after your workshop is pretty much zero on most single session general audience workshops. That is our understanding from a fairly wide survey we have made. People nod their heads, people say they're excited, people walk up to you and ask questions, but in the end they'll go back home or to university and they will edit. Or they will try, get reverted, and never be heard from again. I'm not saying it's easy, it's not. It's very hard to integrate, particularly on the larger Wikipedias that have high standards and a ton of rules that were written seven years ago uh, or ten. And it's hard, it, it truly is hard. I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm not saying I know how to turn an audience into Wikipedians, I don't. I have myself given those workshops and those lectures and seen everybody nod their heads and feel excited, but none of them actually ended up editing. So, what I'm saying is, let's not pretend this is so easy. Let's acknowledge that this is the biggest challenge, and we've heard this this morning. The biggest challenge is to actually get people to edit regularly. And some, some of your groups have that core and are trying to expand it, trying to build on it. Some of you are still working on getting that core and are at the stage where people are interested, they, they believe in the vision, they're, 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 they want to make this happen, hasn't happened yet. I will say that Wikipedia, in the end, is not for everyone to edit. I mean, editing Wikipedia is not for everyone. Frankly, spending your spare time editing an encyclopedia is a bit of an unusual hobby. It's not for everyone, really. Um, on the flip side,